Hey guys, Stripter here. Today I'm doing an extremely in-depth unboxing and review of the brand new Scuf Vantage controller. We're going to be taking the entire controller apart and going over it in minutia today because this is the biggest and most complicated product launch that Scuf Gaming has ever had. I'm going to be unboxing this and I'm joined by my trusted servant Ozymandias over here who has to wear the cone of shame because he injured his foot and he can't chew on it and also he's afraid of lightning so he has to be by my side at the entire time I do this video. So let's go ahead and unbox this enormous box that I got from Scuff Gaming. It's about a foot and a half by a foot. I'm going to go ahead and put it down on the ground and I'm going to see if I can lift it up like this so you guys can see the contents inside. All right, so I got super excited about the controller and did the whole intro and forgot to disclose my sponsorship, which is very important according to FTC regulations. I am sponsored by Scuff Gaming. I've been sponsored by them since 2011. I've been doing these disclosures since 2011, so it shouldn't be a surprise. However, I have no requirements for bias in any of my YouTube videos whatsoever, so expect a very thorough review. As you can see, we're literally taking the controller apart today. Can you put this back together? You probably can't. You can't spell back together, but you're a good boy. You've got a good heart. And uh, we're gonna be having fun today. If you're interested in ordering this product or just learning more about it, there's a link down there that goes straight to scuffgaming.com. It's also available in GameStop, both on their website or in person, which is awesome. And I have my own discount code that you'll see up here. It's just DRFT, same as everything else, very easy to enter. But let's uh, cut backwards in time to the unboxing I did before I got too deep into taking everything apart. Yes, uh, I have a nice letter coming out saying thank you for purchasing the Scuff Vantage. And you can see the controller itself here. Of note, you'll see that it is an officially licensed PlayStation product, as in they worked with PlayStation to get the proper licensing and certification for this one. And it is not a modified controller. Scuff has done modified controllers for a long time. This is a fully manufactured product from Scuff. Inside the box, we have very briefly a t-shirt that says power to win. No. Prepare to win. I can't read upside down. <laughs> My upside down reading, upside down reading is trash -roni. We have a collectible pin and lanyard, which we can put in the merchandise section. Inside the box, and these are things we're gonna to get to later, we have custom face plates for the scuff controller. Once we take it apart, I'll show you how to change these. And we also have, now these are instructions down here, we're not gonna read those. We also have customizable thumbsticks and pads and everything else. We'll show you how to change these as well. Triggers, I should say. I, kept, I called them pads because I was thinking about the D-pad. But we'll put these down as well and move straight into the controller itself, which is way bigger than normal. This is actually kind of heavy. This is a very, very big box just in its own right. So let's put the enormous box out of the way and focus just on this guy. Uh, very nice looking box. You can see we've got a honeycomb pattern on the side of it. And of note, you still see the PlayStation logo and branding and everything on the front. And why today's video is so long, we gotta go through all this. This is a very brief feature list of the controller and you can see how it comes apart and all the things that it does. We have a lot to talk about today. So let's go ahead and open it up and take the controller out. Just slide it out sideways like so, like so. Put the big box over to the side by the dog. And I think I've got it upside down here. I'll just open her up like that. And voila, that is the Scuff Vantage controller. It like has its own little display mount inside the box. I can tell that Scuff Gaming put a lot of effort into the unboxing experience of this controller. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and make a popping noise. Oh, that's the, that's the whole face. We're gonna get to that part in a little bit. I can get it out, aha. So this is the controller itself. There's more things in the box. You get a very good look at it. Of note, the touchpad up here is textured, which is kind of strange. Has a lot of your standard buttons and sticks and D-pad. Uh, you will see, however, on the sides of it, we have an extra, I would call this a bumper. So you've got your standard R1 and R2, but you also have a side one and side two. So these are really neat. We'll talk about these. Of course, we now have four paddles on the bottom for the PlayStation controller. Each one of these is removable. And we have a nice little USB hook where your cable won't get yanked out quite so easily so you won't break that off and break the controller. And finally, we have an audio bar here, which is complex in its own right. But let's go ahead and finish the last bit of unboxing and get to the underneath part of this box. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. And then here, wow, there's so much stuff going on in here. 
My gosh. All right, so our camera actually ran out of batteries mid-recording here, but uh, inside the big package is an extremely thick and probably important instruction manual, warranty manual, scuff stickers for whatever you plan to stick them on. Let's go ahead and give this a brief. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. We're gonna get over all this stuff today, uh, the fun way, the video way. Okay, so we're finally at the fun part where I'm gonna be talking a lot about the controller itself, what it does, uh, but we will be taking it apart. We're gonna do a brief rundown on scuff controllers in general and a few of the more obvious features on this one. So the most important thing about any scuff controller is when you flip it over on the back, you'll see that there are these paddles on the bottom side of it. Each one of these paddles corresponds to a face button up here. So for instance, I could set this paddle to X for jump, this paddle for square for reload or duck, and triangle for swap guns. And you can just map any four of those down here so that when I hold it, like this. If I want to swap weapons, all I do is click with one finger. I want to jump, duck, reload, anything like that, so that I can control my character completely with my bottom fingers. And if you'll notice the shape down here, they're designed to also give you a good comfortable grip on the controller while you do this, so that you don't put unnecessary weight on your other fingers. The benefit to this is if you're playing a standard shooter game, we'll probably flip this image so it's a little easier to see in editing. Uh, and I'm walking, I'm aiming with this stick, I'm tracking my enemies, I don't want to aim, swap, aim, jump, aim, duck, aim, whatever. It's kind of a flaw with basic controller design. What's way better is to keep my thumb on the stick and aim around and click these paddles on the bottom so that I'm able to continually track my enemies. And it's a very big advantage. That's a standard thing that Scuff Controllers has, so I don't think that's really shocking to any of you, but just in case. This one's different though. They're adding two extra controllable buttons. Uh, we're calling them side one and side two. Side two is on the right, side one is gonna be on your left hand side respectively. And these are, it's kind of like having an extra bumper, but these are reprogrammable to any button that you see fit. These are super nice, uh, especially in Fortnite of all things. In Call of Duty, I'm probably gonna bind these for pickups and blackout. But these are programmable buttons, not programmable for cheating or for like macros or combos, but you can set them to be anything. So for instance, if I, uh, if I want my D-pad to do something important, but I don't want to take my hands off this stick, I can just bind it to side one. If I don't like the paddles on the bottom, and some people really don't, I can rebind them to the sides. If for whatever reason the game uses the start button, or you're missing a finger and it's hard for you to hit R2 on the back over here, you bind it to the side. You can bind in the click sticks. You can bind anything you want to these extra buttons. So overall, the controller has uh, six, I almost said four, because there's four paddles on the back, six customizable buttons. So your inputs are much nicer. I liken it to having a gaming mouse with extra buttons on the side for PC. But boy, are we not done. Very briefly, uh, you can see that there is a nice grip texture here on the controller. It's very nice. It has a good feel to it. This is the same texture of a lot of gun grip companies use. It's military grade for the most part. So that prevents sweating. It just gives you a nice comfortable grip. One of the other things that you can customize depending on the game are your trigger stops. Now these controllers are by default set up to where you don't have to pull them too far to activate. You can actually spin this little guy here upside down so that your trigger will pull exactly that far. And the way this works is if you're playing a game that has like a pistol or a rapid fire item, you wanna hit your trigger fast, you press and you go to your full incline really fast. You just reset and press it really fast instead of pressing it all the way in. It's just a little bit of space saving, but it will make your trigger finger way faster. However, that's not the end of the customization here because it's the fanciest controller I've ever used. I'm gonna go ahead and take off one of these uh, panels, not panels, they're triggers and there are many styles of them which you will see soon and we are going to break out the scuff hex key which is this little key right here it's very important to have it comes with your scuff and you can adjust these trigger stops more than just spinning the little thing upside down you can use the hex key put it in this tiny hole here which is probably difficult to see if i can get it lined up properly and using this i can twist now i've got this set up just the way i like it so i'm not going to but i could twist the left and right and micro tune the adjustments on my triggers, which is super nice. But some people don't like these kinds of triggers. Some people have longer, bigger, heavier fingers. So instead, they would customize them with these guys that snap right on. Now, personally, I don't like the long ones. 
I like the little short ones, uh, but it is just an option and you can take these on and off as you see fit. It's really easy to do. I'm literally doing it backwards here in the video for you. Perfect. Okay. We're getting there. Let's roll her around to the other side. Same kind of thing a lot of scuff controllers have is you have these uh, concave sticks. You can have them of various lengths. Personally, I prefer ones that are uh, domed instead. So these are interchangeable. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but this is where things are starting to get really weird. The looks of the controller are customizable and the internals are as well, such that if I can get a decent grip, I'm doing it backwards, so it's a little bit hard for me to see. You can take off the entire faceplate of the controller, just like this. And that's the entire faceplate of the controller gone. Now you would do that not only because you can access some internals that we will change later, but because Scuff has heard you customers loud and clear that you don't like paying a lot of extra money to change the case on your controller. If you don't like a color, if you don't like whatever, you don't want to buy another $150 controller. Well, you can just put a new face on it and it's literally that easy. I personally like this blue color because everything in my house is blue themed, including my shirt. Uh, but that's all it takes to change and it's super, super easy. You can even change these little rings. I've got black ones down here. Now these rings are a very small change. Uh, so the yellow rings I'm talking about. Uh, but you can change those as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take the face plate back off again. But back on to the thumbsticks. Check this out. So the thumbsticks just come right off. I literally just pull them off and that's all. And you probably don't want to game on these guys. I guess you could in theory. Just wouldn't be great for you. So instead, as I open up my accessory box on the side, I'm gonna pull out a much longer domed thumbstick. Now these are the ones that I greatly prefer to play with and a similar size domed thumbstick. So you can see that we have different choices in thumbsticks. These are default. I prefer these. Not many people prefer these, but I just generally like them. It's nice to have these options. So I can take my domed thumbstick and I can put it on the controller. Let's see if I can slide it in. There we go. Sink it in. Now we get the other side going on. I think that's a, that's a catch and we sink her in. And we just changed the thumbsticks on the controller. So put the face plate back on. It's a little different fit there. Oh, perfect. And now I have domed longer thumbsticks. I like the feel of these. I also like them longer so that I can do more precise movements and aiming. Uh, one of the other very common things to do is have a short stubby left stick and a long aiming stick. Some people like it that way. I try to keep them both similar, but we're not even close to done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the front of the controller off again. We're gonna be doing this a lot today. I hope you guys are ready for that. You can also change the D-pad. D-pad comes off. You can change it too if you want to. Now this is one I greatly don't prefer. Circular D-pad, super easy. You can do that. Um, and the way it would work, now the D-pad's a little different. You would, I'm gonna take this off super quick, put the face plate back on, you put the D-pad on. Now you have a big goofy circular D-pad. Why gamers love these so much, I have no idea, but they do. So I'll pop the D-pad off, I'll pop the face plate off yet again, and let's go to a more advanced feature than this. The next advanced feature of our disassembled controller is if you notice there's an L and an R here. Now this is a surprisingly complex thing for me, but I'm gonna dig my thumb in right there and take these out. Believe it or not, these are not battery packs. These guys right here are the rumbles for your controller. These control how much your controller rumbles, vibrate, haptic feedback, whatever you wanna call it. You can actually see the parts right here that rumble, the little spinners. I can't spin them fast enough because they'll rotate at thousands of RPMs when you're playing games. Uh, but these are customizable and removable. For scuff controllers past, you had to purchase the controller and you had to choose, I want rumbles or I don't want rumbles. Most professional players don't want the rumble pack because they feel it disrupts their aim. Some people don't like the feedback. Some people don't like the weight. Personally, I love the rumbles and any game that uses them too much, I just go to the settings and turn them off. But with this controller, you can just take them out and the controller works just fine. Probably improves the battery life a little bit and makes it lighter. So I can take my rumbles out and just put the faceplate back on again. We'll do the regular one and bam, controller is completely rumble free and good to go. And it has been customized, which is, it's, it's baffling in a way how much they let you change on this controller. So I'm gonna take it off yet. Actually, we're gonna leave this on for a second. The next two features all happen down here. 
Uh, now, this controller is not plugged into a PlayStation in my room, so I can't show you exactly, but this black bar actually has LEDs inside of it and it lights up. You would plug in your headset via standard audio port, and you have buttons here. It's just a slider. It's like a touchscreen slider for your volume, and you can click to mute or click to unmute and control your sound completely down here with a small, simple LED screen. Now, I'm a little bit embarrassed that that's a feature I'm not showing off. I just didn't want to drag my PlayStation down here tonight. The other two things are you can see that there is a USB or Bluetooth mode. This controller can be used wirelessly via Bluetooth, just like any PlayStation product, or you can put it in wired only mode in a more competitive setting so you don't get interference and theoretically faster data inputs. And to change them, you just slide this little switch back and forth, very easy thing to do. And finally, the last really, nope, next to last, goodness gracious, next to last feature we're gonna talk about is this over here. This is just your programming switch. You would turn this on to reprogram a button and you would like hit and hold a paddle and press a face button for a few seconds, then let go. Then you slide it back and all your programming is done. That's how you would reprogram your buttons. It's a super, super easy thing. And finally, the very, very last thing I promise you that we will show you today is paddle customization. Goodness gracious, some people, for whatever reason, don't like the paddles. It cramps their fingers, they don't enjoy them. So these guys, you can just take right on out. They literally slide out just that easy. Uh, what a lot of people do is they don't like the internal paddles for whatever reason, so they just keep the ones on the outside. And I'll see if I can get this guy. I'm doing a little backwards here, so I can't quite see what I'm doing. There we go and it slides right back in, they slide right out. So if you don't want them, you don't have to use them, you don't have to use any of them. And you can see the small little actuator buttons down here that they use to uh, actually press the buttons. And you can see the tiny little pins on the bottom that would be used to hit the actuator buttons to cause the movements. And they're pretty straightforward to put back in. There we go. There we go, slid back in. And I believe that is all the features on this SCUF controller uh, that's a lot of features. There's some drawbacks that I want to talk about, but first I want to do a quick demo on how quickly you can customize this controller. All right, before we get to the drawback section, I want to show you just how quickly I can completely customize the Scuff Vantage. Right now it's in its completely default configuration, default paddles, default triggers, default case, default rumbles, default sticks, default D-pad, everything default. I'm going to show you how quickly I can change every single component and customize it. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go red and black theme here, okay? And we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get to the downsides. So three, two, one, go. And while I do this, I'm probably going to do it a little further away from the camera and with a less great angle than usual, just so that I can do it faster. We've already done each individual component before. So I wanna show you how quickly, I'm just gonna pretend I'm a guy who doesn't like metal paddles. We're just gonna do no metal paddles. There we go. And there we go. No more paddles there. Let's go ahead and put some new super long dome sticks in. These are going to be the ones that take the most time. Oh, please tell me I got it the first go. Oh, come on, get in there. <laughs> there we go. Another stick going in. Excellent. Let's get these big long ones out. I can't deal with these very well. They're hard for me to get to. Oop. Am I drunk? I'm putting it on the right one. I'm pretty sure I am. <laughs> Aha, I was doing it backwards. There we go. Our D-pad will change soon too. Let's go ahead and put our blackout face on. Perfect. And D-pad changed. Okay, so that was less than a minute to a completely different looking and functioning controller. I've changed both of the sticks to domed and long. Goofy D-pad, no human being should want that, but they do. Black and red theme, completely different triggers, paddles on the backs are different too, and the rumble packs are no longer in them, and that is just how quickly and easily you can customize this scuff Vantage. And overall, I think this is a really good controller. There is basically no drawback when it comes to gaming with this controller. There's no time that you're going to find yourself at a disadvantage. There's no inherent flaws with the product that you need to be super concerned about. I'm just putting these guys back on. There we go. Because personally, I like having four paddles. I'm going to be breaking this bad girl in tonight. There is a two downsides with compatibility and price. Three downsides with compatibility and price. Number one, this is an officially licensed PlayStation product. 
but it is one of the first scuff controllers that is not a modified PlayStation controller. Old scuff controllers start as a regular PlayStation controller and get up modified into something better. This one is a completely original manufacturing job, which means that the PlayStation will not recognize it as a PlayStation controller. It will be recognized as a third-party device. Gaming-wise, this makes no difference to you. It doesn't hurt you, it doesn't make your inputs slower or worse or different. The drawback is only that you can't turn the PlayStation off with this controller. You'll have to walk up to the PlayStation and hit the button to turn it off because since it's not literally a Sony manufactured product, you can't turn the PlayStation off with this controller. The other problem is that since this is not a PlayStation controller, if you're a PC gamer, this will not use the standard PlayStation controller drivers that you use if you play with the controller on PC. I know a lot of PC gamers that have controllers for platformer games, racer games. There's actually a lot of people that play shooters that are just more comfortable with controllers for whatever reason. This controller will not use the PlayStation 4 drivers, the Sony drivers that are available on PC. Also, Scuff has currently not released PC compatible drivers for this controller. That's coming in the future. They do plan to release PC drivers for the Scuff Vantage in the coming months, but it's not available right now. So if you buy it, it will not work on your PC yet, but it will in a couple of months. The other thing compatibility wise to make note of is that this particular version allows me to swap back and forth between USB and Bluetooth. Depending on what version you order, this option may not be there you may only get the wired version that will only work wired and you cannot upgrade or convert to wireless. So be very careful about which one you pick. Don't get stuck with wired only if that it could become a problem for you. Just be mindful of that when you're purchasing. That is a problem. The other problem with this controller is that it is an expensive controller. And I'm sure that Scuff does not want me to say the word expensive any more than they want me to say the word cheap or anything like that. But the reality is I'm talking your dollars and your money and what it's worth to you. A controller that you can fully customize like this that has Bluetooth and USB options and paddles and side bumpers and crazy thumbsticks and internals you can take in and out is not going to be inexpensive. The base model of this controller, the wired only one, is $169. The full pro version that does wired and wireless is $199. And these type of like colored accessory kits can cost up to $30 extra, depending on which ones you're purchasing. So to get the full controller experience, the maximum level scuff, you need to be prepared to spend several times more money than you would on a base PlayStation controller. For me, I'm perfectly comfortable with this. I think it's you get what you pay for. If you want the world's best controller, you need to be willing to pay for the world's best controller. If you want a controller, this is probably not the one for you. This is a very, very nice product. It's a high-end product. It's a niche product. This isn't an everybody, every day, everywhere product. This is for gamers that want to play better, want to play more comfortable, and want something more than the standard experience. So do not expect it to be cheap. So we ran out of batteries again. Uh, in the meantime, I've customized my controller the way I want it to look. I think it's beautiful, and at the end of the day, you need to decide if this is worth your money. It's a good Christmas present, it's a good product, I've used it before, I played with it at E3 very extensively, and I think that this type of controller is going to be the future of controllers, not just at Scuf, but in general. If you are interested in the Scuf Vantage, there is a link to the store down here below in the description. And of course, you can use code DRFT to get 5% off, and that gives me a small commission as well. So I'd appreciate it if you do that, though you don't have to. And in the very near future, there will be my own version of this controller coming soon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this very detailed breakdown. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.